And it's less than two weeks until the Knesset elections and the latest polls showing a continuing deadlock with former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's Likud losing ground to religious Zionism. A Channel 12 poll from Tuesday night shows the Likud with just 30 seats slipping from 35 only months ago. Most of that former Likud support has gone towards the party led by Knesset members Bitsalel Smotrich and Itamal Bengvil. So joining us now to discuss the latest in Israeli politics is political analyst Mitchell Barak from Kivon Research Strategy and Communications. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So we just saw a clip about Itamal Ben-Gvil. He's doing surprisingly well in, in recent polls. Is he going to be the kingmaker this election? Well, I'm, I'm not convinced he's going to be the kingmaker because um, even if he gets a lot of seats, I mean, first of all, Kingmaker means he can go with either party and decide who's going to be prime minister. He certainly is persona non grata from uh, Lapid and Gantz on the left. So the only, the only thing that he can possibly do is he can either join the government with a significant, both of them with a significant uh, representation, which will include ministers and Knesset chairmanships. But I think Netanyahu is actually in a cynical way hoping for their success because it would help Netanyahu put together a government without them because he will use their success by turning to the left and to the center more and saying, let's put together a government that represents Israelis, that's normal, that can be accepted throughout the world rather than a narrow government that's held together by the extortion of Smutrich and ben which doesn't look very good for any of us. So that's an, that's an interesting take. You're saying Netanyahu could use their success to essentially go to that, but Yair Lapid, Benny Gantz, you know, Gidon Saar, all these politicians have said repeatedly time and again that they will not sit in a government with Netanyahu. Do you think that might change in this case? I think most of them are serious, but again, uh, you know, faced with a sixth election, or possibly going with someone in the Likud or Netanyahu or trying to bring in the religious parties. All he has to do is probably is peel away one of the parties. Uh, and it's not clear what's going to be after Election Day. And, you know, the question is, is, you know, Yair Lapid is in it for the long term. There's no question. But what is Gantz needed for if he's not going to have a strong showing? I mean, he's been defense minister if he has a problem with the next government or with uh, some of the other party leaders, it's possible that some of them uh, tire from this system of elections where they can't govern. So we really don't know what's going to happen. What does look like is taking place is there seems to be an erosion of support from Netanyahu's party to the further right. Uh, and part of the reason is, is Netanyahu really hasn't developed any good campaign message. You know, he usually always runs on security and fear and trying to scare people into voting for him. Now he hasn't really, um, you know, developed a clear message on the, that line. He's focused more on the economy, which is not something that, you know, resonates with people. And, you know, he's already not prime minister. So he used to be able to scare people. What will happen the day after Netanyahu is no longer prime minister? Well, that day has come already. And Lapid is in the position of prime minister. And he, he looks prime ministerial, if you will. He looks like he's doing the job. So, you know, there, there definitely uh, looks like there's an erosion support for what was in the Likud. And if that really happens and Netanyahu is not going to get in, uh, people have been saying, finally, the Likud may cut him off from the party and try and reform in some way within this current Knesset rather than going to six elections. Well, that will be an interesting development. You know, I want to ask you as well, we've seen both Netanyahu and Yair Lapid in recent days uh, really courting the, the Arab-Israeli uh, vote. Lapid uh, just yesterday speaking with the Arab media saying that he will do away with the nation-state law. I mean, how crucial of a vote is this for these two rivals? Well, it's crucial for two reasons. One is because we had a party, Mansour Abbas's party, that went into the government, and that was actually the party that broke the deadlock. Um, and that was helpful to, um, to Lapid and Bennett to form a government. And Israeli Arabs do seem to be want to be part of what goes on in Israel. So that is significant. But the other thing is to also just to get them out to vote. Getting them out to vote her, helps the center and left of center parties. 
by weakening some of the right parties by making more votes needed for each Knesset seats and more votes needed to pass the threshold. So they, uh, whereas Lapid wants them to come out and vote, Netanyahu wants, to, wants them to keep from, keep and not stay home and not vote. Uh, well, a lot of interesting developments, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more interesting developments in the coming two weeks. Mitchell Barak, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you. We'll see you again. Hi, everyone. It's Emmanuel Kadosh. I wanted to invite you all to subscribe to ILTV+, Plus, where you can find our daily news and updates about Israel. And not only that, but live feeds, entertainment, our kosher food show, and so much more. Needless to say, your subscription to ILTV+, Plus helps us grow and create more content while also supporting the state of Israel. Our app is available on all platforms and devices, so I'll see you guys there.